At McMinnville High School, the captain shaking hands at midfield as Hepner and Coquille get set for this two-way semifinal. Busy day across the uh, state of Oregon. In fact, it's already underway at Caldera High School, a 3A semifinal. The seventh seed, a little bit of a Cinderella, but Vale's been there before, and at last check, they were at 21-all against number three seed South Umpqua. The other 3A game is at 1 o'clock at Cottage Grove High School. The top seed, Sayusla, will take on five seed Lapine. The other game in the 2A bracket is at Grants Pass this evening at 5 o'clock, number 2 Kennedy and number 3 Lakeview. Also in Bend at Caldera High School, the new campus, at 2 o'clock this afternoon, the number 1 1A school, 8-man football for Adrian against 4-seed Lost River. The 2-seed Powder Valley, the 3-seed St. Paul will play at 6 o'clock. And this afternoon... Right now at Grants Pass High School, Marshfield and Mazama. Marshfield's the number one seed in 4A. And at 5 o'clock tonight here at Wharton Stadium at McMinnville, number seven, Mariston, number three, Estacada. Busy day at halftime. We'll tell you about what happened last night in 5A and 6A football. But kickoff is next between Coquille and Hepner here on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. The Coquille Red Devils will kick off this afternoon. They are clad in white tops with red numerals, red pants with white piping on the sides, and red helmets. The Hebner Mustangs, this is one of their alternative uniforms, gray tops with blue numerals and a lettering trimmed in yellow with blue pants. They have blue helmets with a yellow Mustang logo on the side. This afternoon in McMinnville, 49 degrees as we get set for kickoff. There's just a touch of wind this afternoon, and it's going to be at the back of the Mustangs as they get set to receive attacking left to right. Levi Hoyle is a sophomore. He's got it teed. They do not kick it deep a lot. It's going to be a pooch fair catch called for and hauled in. Whistles uh, come in as Jace Coe secures it. Didn't see a flag fly. Put the arm up for the fair catch. Uh, they may have ruled it was an insufficient signal, but a uh, little surprised that that doesn't get whistled. However, it's still being Hepner football. They'll mark it where the catch was made, and the officials are getting together right now. Our crew, by the way, today is from the uh, Portland Association. Tracy Sevner is the referee. His umpire is Robert White. Mike Craddock, the head linesman. The line judge is Gilson McElvain, and the back judge, Rebecca Brisson. First down and 10 for Hepner from the 47, just short of midfield. They'll start off on the left hash mark with Landon Mitchell at the quarterback position. He'll start in a shotgun set with a back to his right. Man in motion left to right, and it's a toss that way. Out to the edge goes a Caden George. George across the 50-yard line is pulled down into Coquille territory, tackled by Hayden DeGeros after a pickup of six. Tucker Ashbrook, the tackle pulling out there for Hepner, leading the way on that sweep as the Mustangs on this opening possession, they want to try to establish their running game early, get the tempo that they want. They would like to grind it out. We talked about it earlier, the best way to hold Gunnar Yates down is to have the football yourself. Ashbeck is the junior starting at right tackle. The right guard is Jacob Lentz. He's also a junior. Senior Toby Nation is the center. Keegan Stegel is the senior at left guard. And Connor Brosnan is the senior at left tackle. Though They do an offset with both guards on one side. This is the right side right now with a handoff. And up the middle for Brock Heisler. Heisler's caught, dropped for a loss. Two yards backwards as a pile gets to him, including Kieran Sherritt, the uh, sophomore defensive end, leading the way. Wayman Messerly also, Raylan Messerly rather, also got in there. He got penetration early on, got contact as well as Hepner goes back a yard. Hepner has a third down and six facing them just across midfield on the Coquille side of the 49. Mitchell, the sophomore, last week in the quarterfinal win over Weston McEwen, 40 to nothing. He passed 11 times, completed six of them, was intercepted on the last pass he threw of the game. That was at the end of the first half. He did not throw a ball in the second half and was a total of 42 yards. Mitchell will hand off right side for Heisler. Heisler to the edge is pulled down. Bo Messerly, the sophomore, was able to get to him, but there's a flag out as Messerly stops him at the 46-yard line, a gain of two. I'm wondering if Cameron Proudfoot, who was also in there, might have got a hand on the face mask on the tackle, and he did. Well, they're going to say face mask on Hepner. They pointed against the offense there. 
Just short of two minutes into the contest. Hefner on their opening drive. And Greg Grant bends down to the knees in disbelief that the call is going to go against the Mustangs. Yep. It was a face mask call on the offense on Hepner. Maybe the ball carrier on the attempt to stiff arm, it may have grasped the mask. You can put your hand in the mask as a running back stiff arming you, if it's flat out, but if you grab on, it's a face mask just like it would be on the defense trying to tackle you. Four down lineman for Coquille. It's a 4-4 defensive alignment with Kieran Sherritt and Grady Areola at the ends. Tom Riley and Jared Callahan at the tackles. The linebackers, we've mentioned both Bo and Waylon Messerly. Bo is a year older. Waylon's just a freshman. Jocelyn De Los Santos and Brock Willis. And then Gunnar Yates who four years of his time at Coquille has been recognized as a first-team all-defensive, first as a defensive back, now as a linebacker the last two years, with uh, Hayden DeGeros and uh, Jonathan Huffman at cornerbacks and the safety Hunter Layton. Up the middle, and the draw play gets back to the 50-yard line for Caden George. The gains of 12, but it's not enough. He ran there almost based on the single wing look, and they went to the, the snap to the short back just behind the line to the right, just the very well a quick snap. Got good yardage on that, but that personal foul on the face mask, it was the 15-yard variety, set Hepner back, and they've got to punt the football away. Jacob Lentz is the punter. A line drive kick towards his sideline, bounces at the 25 and out at the 23-yard line. A 24-yard kick, and Hepner will, with 9.18 on the clock, give the ball to Coquille for their first offensive drive of the game. Gunnar Yates will get all the headlines. The last two years, he's been the offensive player of the year in the Sunset Conference. He is a senior, and he'll be at the halfback position in this wing tee, which puts Brock Willis at the fullback and Hayden DeGeros at wingback. Jonathan Huffman is the uh, split end along with Hunter Layton. Layton will be out wide to the right side as Bryce Poston goes under center. First and 10 from the 23. Left hash mark up the middle. And Willis rumbles his way to the 30-yard line where he's hauled down by the uh, defensive end, Blaine Mahoney. Mahoney and Tucker Ashbeck at ends. Cade Cunningham and Toby Nation at tackles for Hepner. The linebackers, Caden George, Brock Eisler, and Connor Brosnan. Cornerback, Xander Fisher and Jace Coe. Cameron Proudfoot and Derek Smith at the safeties. Eight in the box, second down and three at a right side run. Again, Willis, and he'll get first down yardage. Going to the right side, Coe tackles him at the 39-yard line, just short of the 40. Coquille establishing the other back as a threat right now. You know most defenses, Hepner's probably no different, keying on Yates. Give the ball the first couple times to the other running back who's a good quality back as well in Willis. You got that good strong line in front of them. Get a first down out of that. Now you start to make Hepner think a little bit more about everybody else in this offense. First down and 10 from the 39, 8, 20 on the clock first quarter. This is Yates running to the right side and sweep across the 40-yard line out at the hash marks, hit by Coe again, but Coe gets him after a 70-yard gain. But quickness in the first step of Yates is apparent. I've never seen him play before. And just from the first carry, you can see there's an initial burst that he gets, but it's a controlled initial burst. He's not just running into the hole in advance of when it, be, it arrives. He waits for that hole, and then as soon as he sees, he gets that quick step of acceleration and the very quick shifty feet. They're very obvious early on when you see them. At the 42, second down and eight. Toss play to the left for Yates, and he's stacked up at the 45-yard line by a trio of gray shirts, but it's enough for three yards and a first down. Yates a week ago against Jefferson in the quarterfinal victory that Coquille was able to secure 48-8. to eight had 358 yards. He did it on just 11 carries. And as we get into the start of this game, he is just short of 1,700 yards on the season. He'll get there on maybe the next carry, the carry after that. He's very close to 1,700. And he's done that, and this is just his eighth game. First down and 10 from the 45 at the left hash mark. His post and goes under center. Power to the left side, and they'll go that direction with a dive play. Willis, the ball carrier, is stopped by Jacob Lentz, among others. 
for Hepner, a lot of the goal on defense is make Coquille take a lot of plays. Don't give up the big 20, 30 yarders. Make them go in small chunks and force a mistake down the line. Second down and a seven. Left side run for Yates. He'll get across midfield. Pulled down by Derek Smith and helped out on the play by Brock Heisler. Cannon they got, George, yeah. yeah. And Brock Heisler from the backside did a good job to get there. Heisler brings an element on defense for Hepner that probably Coquille has not seen a lot of, that, the ability on quickness to be able to stay with a, a Yates or a Willis from the backside. That's probably something they've not seen a lot this year. Joey Barbie to the ball, his hands on it at the 49 in Hepner territory. Left hash mark, third down and four. In motion, DeGeros, left to right, dive play. Up the middle for Willis. He will be stopped at the 46 in Hepner territory. A yard short of the first down marker. Fourth and one, Coquille will be going for it with 5.45 left in quarter number one. Their first drive of scoreless ball game. The Red Devils have averaged 49.9 points per game. 314 total scored this season. They're giving up just over 12 points per game. Hepner's defense only allowing six points per game as the champions of the Blue Mountain Conference. Fourth down and one. Fake to Willis. Dive play coming back to the left on the counter. Yates has the first down as he dives to the 43-yard line over the top of a Caden George. Well run counter that time. Got him a, a good hole. He only needed the one, but got three there. And Coquille establishing right now a good rhythm with his wing tee offensively. Just getting little chunks right now, moving the football right now. Usually most offenses like this, they believe when they have to get two to three yards, they can get it any time they want to. And you'll see a much higher percentage of fourth down conversion attempts than you will see from maybe some of the bigger schools that run spread offenses. DeGeros, the wing back to the left, across the formation to the right, toss play that way, and in the backfield, Yates is hit. Met for a three-yard loss. Everybody there was led by Connor Brosnan, the linebacker. Proudfoot was there as well. Heisler was there as well. Proudfoot, who's a strong safety you know, against this Coquille offense, really more plays like a linebacker usually. And you do wonder at some point if you're Coquille, when do you think about trying to throw the football a little bit and make them at least honor the pass? Greg Grant expected only four or five passes the entire game from Bryce Poston. Second down and 13 after the three-yard loss. Dive play up the middle. Willis breaks into the second level, breaks a tackle. Hauled down from behind by Blaine Mahoney at the 36-yard line in the middle of the field. And that's why they only throw the ball four or five times a game. The ability to come back from a loss on first down and have the confidence and the ability to be able to get a nine, ten-yard gash just right up the middle. There was nothing fancy about that. That was just straight up the middle power football. And now you get a manageable third down and three. With 3.38 left in quarter number one, the clock spinning here at McMinnville High School. Scoreless game, Coquille trying to strike first. Yates with a handoff, running counter to the left side, hauled down at the 30-yard line, six-yard gain and a first down. Aiden Lathrop that time made the tackle, but Coquille again. These offenses, what they're so good at when you can run a wing T or double wing type offense where you power away and you power away and you pound and you get bodies at the point of the attack is grind down defenses. And then you start to get the bigger 10, 15, 20 yard chunks where you really start to pour it, pour it on as an offense and stretch out leads. Of course, go kill in their opening possession here and it has been impressive so far. They have just very patiently made their way down the field. First down and 10, left hash mark 30 yard line. Again, DeGero's left to right across the formation. Up the middle for Willis, and he is uh, stacked up. Toby Nation, the uh, senior tackle, in there on uh, the stop, helped out by Heisler, who's in on another stop. That was play number 12 of this drive, by the way. And they've already used a little over six minutes of the clock. Two and a half minutes left in quarter number one. A one-yard gain makes it second down and a nine. Greg Grant and Robert Wilson working together on the defense today. Les Payne, the defensive coordinator who's been with Grant for 
the three decades plus he's been there. In fact, the field in Hefner at the Morrow County Fairgrounds is named after him. He's been ill, so he is watching from home today. Second down and nine. Left side run, Yates is pulled down after a gain of a handful more. Hit on the play first by Jacob Lentz. It is a real tough battle in the trenches right now between these two football teams. Outstanding offensive line with outstanding technique by Co for Coquille. Hepner on the other side, a lot of toughness in there. And again, they're putting eight in the box and really with the corners, the way they're playing them, it's almost 10 in the box right now. It is tough sledding between the tackles right now. And Coquille facing a third down and long, but you're in a four down situation anyway. Third down and seven to go from the 27 yard line. Offset to the left, Yates is out right. Jadaros to the right side. They will look to toss out into the right flat. They have Jadaros with it. First down yardage inside the 20 and knocked near the sideline out at the 17 yard line. Pick it up 10 on the pass play. Simeone knocked him out of bounds, but there is a, a key play for Coquille because now that has to be honored. Did you, there was nobody out there in the flat to go after Jaderos. It was it was wide open for him. All the quarterback post had to do was just lay the ball out there, and he did, and they get the 10-yard pickup and move the sticks again. And now it's a play Hepner's got to think about, so it's not as easy to just pinch people in defensively. Poston, who doesn't throw a lot. Honorable mention in the Sunset Conference, and the Hepner Mustangs will call a timeout. 54 seconds left of the first quarter. Coquille on the opening drive, trying to score first on the OSA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Out of a Hepner timeout, 54 seconds left in the first quarter. Coquille, first down and 10 from the 17. Hand off to Willis. Willis cuts back to his right, and he's stacked up at the right hash mark. Two there, Connor Brosnan leading the way along with Caden George. Looked like Tucker Ashbeck may have also been there to uh, stuff the spot that the senior second team selection out of the uh, Sunset Conference, Brock Willis, wanted to run to. Still gain of one to the 16-yard line, a second down and nine. The split end, Jonathan Huffman is out to the left side. Toss play, Yates running out to the left, trying to get to the edge. He will not. Caught out there by Derek Smith, the safety, stepping up, and a loss of four. Derek Smith read that play the moment it started. That's one where he recognized something out of something they saw in the film earlier in the week. He went right to the spot Yates was heading, and it's a big loss there. That is going to end up being the last play of the first quarter. Scoreless, Coquille on their opening drive, facing third down and long to start the second quarter here on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Second quarter at McMinnville High School's at Wharton Stadium. Eric Olson and Mark Bailey with you on the OSAA radio network. The Coquille Red Devils, the four seed, and the runner-up in the Sunset Conference of this season are on their opening drive, but facing a third down and 14 from the 21 in Hepner territory. The number one seed Mustangs averaging just under a touchdown per game, trying to stand up here on this long Coquille drive. It's Yates with a counter, and he is hit right at the point of attack. Connor Brosnan again gets in there. Check that, not Yates. That was Hayden Jaderos. Trying to run the counter of the wing back that time, and he cut it up in the middle immediately, and he was met by a wall of gray. I asked David Thomas about what he was thinking is possible as far as field goals go. He said, well, we haven't tried one all season. Maybe if we could get it inside 30, this one would be closer to 40. So fourth down and at 14, they go for it. Play action, rolling to the right, post into throw towards the end zone. Ball is tipped and picked off, and right at the end zone, wisely, they will stay in the end zone. Simiotti, who didn't play last week, was battling an injury. Intercepts the ball that was tipped by Jace Coe, and Hepner will get it at the 20 yard line, surviving the drive that started a couple of minutes into the uh, first quarter and ends just about a minute into the second quarter. 11 17 left in this period, and Hepner gets the ball back in this scoreless game. 10 minutes and one second is how long Coquille possessed the football, and they come up with nothing out of it. 
except for field position somewhat as Hepner starts at their own 20. Simeone, the wise decision not to come out of the end zone. Landon Mitchell will flip the power to the right side. Both guards that way. High snap through his hands. He goes back, bobbles it. The ball is still loose. Tumble around the uh, five-yard line. And somehow Mitchell gets back on top of it at the four-yard line. A comedy of errors, but Greg Grant and the Mustangs are not laughing as they lose 16. Mitchell tried to pick that up initially on the move, and that made the problem worse because the ball squared away on that field turf and was getting dangerously close to the end zone, and he was fortunate to basically outcrawl about three or four Red Devils of that football. Neither he nor Heisler looked like they saw it initially. I wonder if the snap count was wrong from Nation. That is a possibility. It was a little high also. Pistol set, Mitchell. The full back in front of him will put a man in motion left to right. They'll try to sweep out to the edge. Coe trying to get to the edge. He will and is knocked out of bounds. He drops the ball as he's hit high at the nine-yard line. Picking up five, but Coe is still down. Yeah, well, Grabbing his leg and Yates, who was the one who hit him. I think Yates knew that this was going to be a problem. He was staying with the uh, back Coe down there on the field for a moment. And he knew that he had been... Shake it up, and they are checking. It looks like the left knee down there. 10.25 left in the second quarter. Greg Grant is over there to talk to Coe as well. Scoreless here at McMinnville High School. We will come back, hopefully tell you a little bit more about Coe and continue this Hepner Drive of the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. It's the OSAA On Point Community Credit Union two-way state championship semifinals from Wharton Stadium at McMinnville. And Jace Coe has been injured. They're looking at his left leg with 10.25 left in the second quarter. Coe, a five-yard run to the left, and he was hit at the sideline by Gunnar Yates, immediately grabbed for that left side. And uh, the teams are huddled up on their respective sidelines as Coe continues to be checked on. They're going to help him up right now. And he's able to walk on it. So good news. It's, it's not the prettiest walk in the world, but he can put pressure on it. So that's real good news. Yeah, by himself to be able to walk those 15 yards back towards the sideline. After the play, Hepner is looking at third down and 20, about two from the nine-yard line. This drive started with a high snap and a fumble that was recovered by Landon Mitchell, which is probably the best outcome to it because there were about four Coquille Red Devils around Mitchell, and they could be looking at knocking on the door instead. Hepner's going to try to convert third down and long. Mitchell will move. Man a motion toss to the left side. This is Heisler on the left sideline. He'll cut back to his right and get to the 20-yard line where he's brought down by Willis. And Hepner's done a good job to at least get back to the original line of scrimmage after a disastrous play on the opening snap of the series, lost 16 yards, and at least now you can punt the ball out a little bit. Jacob Lentz generally is going to kick a low line drive, and it generally is going to roll for Hepner. Jonathan Huffman's going to try to avoid that. The senior for Coquille is just on the Hepner side of the 50. Lentz kick is going to bounce at the 45, and Huffman will get away for it. Does take that Hepner roll and gets down to the 45-yard line. So for the Mustangs, ends up being a 35-yard punt and puts Coquille back on their side of the 50 with 9.38 left in the second quarter. This game is scoreless. And again, given what happened on first down, yes, I know Greg Grant would say the best case scenario would be to have picked up the first down from second and 26. But when you look at how things turned out on it, to be able to punt the ball, have Coquille start at least on their half of the field, not deep into it, but at least the 45-yard line, that's about as good as you could hope for in that situation. David Gribbs out at cornerback as Jace Coe is still being attended to back behind the rest of his uh, team on the bench just down below us here at Wharton Stadium. First down and 10 for Coquille at the 45. Right hash mark set and handoff for Yates. Running left side. Yates will break a tackle and get across the 50 to the 47-yard line. Pulled down by Connor Brosnan who ended up on his back hanging on for dear life. There's a power run that time by the left side of the Red Devil line, and 
Coquille again had about a 10 minute drive on their first possession, couldn't score. They got stopped late in the drive. Now see after they get a three and out from Hepner if they can try to regain that offensive momentum. Cameron Lantos is the offensive coordinator for David Thomas and he's up top and he's relaying things down to the head coach. Hand off Yates again. He'll come back to his right and break a tackle at the 35. 30-yard 30 line slips past another. It is hauled down at the 18-yard line. The saving tackle made by Simeone. And those are the plays that make Coquille tough to stop. You can be you know, holding them down, forcing them to down in distant situations, but when you give up the big run like that, Hepner's going to use a timeout as Greg Grant's not happy about what he saw. 30-yard run with 8.55 left in the first half. Coquille knocking on the door in the red zone to try to put the first points on the board here on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Gunnar Yates takes a right side run, but there's a flag out. Yates down to the 10-yard line, a 70-yard carry out of Hepner's second time out of the first half. 8.50 on the clock here in quarter number two. Coquille is on their second drive of the contest. They have dominated ball possession. Ten minutes drive on their opening touch of the ball. This is their second drive of the game. But they're going backwards with a false start penalty indicated by the referee, Tracy Sumner. Jace Coe is still being attended to, away from the action that's off to our right here at McMinnville High School. Yates, buck sweep out to the left side. This time Yates is caught. Good job setting the edge, Blaine Mahoney. Boy, Mahoney just was not going to be deterred to get that tackle. He sealed the edge, as you mentioned. Had to kind of take two grabs at Yates, but he kept the hold of the jersey at all times and finally got some help from others coming in to bring him down. And Coquille, they've already had one drive where they get down close and didn't score. Now a second drive in danger after a penalty and loss of yardage on that play of going the same way. Second down and 16 at the 23-yard line. Yates did pick up a little bit. Play action. Rolling to the right, posted to throw. Completes it in the middle of the field to Leighton. Leighton inside the 15-yard line is pulled down. It was Caden George, the sophomore linebacker, made the tackle at the 12. Heisler had a chance to get that tackle at the point where the ball was caught and missed it. I'm wondering if he kind of got caught betwixt in between with that to go to the man or try to get the interception there and kind of did half of both and couldn't really get a wrap on the tackle there and it cost him another four or five yards and now Coquille gets back in one of their better down and distance situations. Coquille will also take a time out to talk about this third down and five with 7.30 left in the second quarter. Problem this season for Coquille was in the first month of the year they had 38 days off because they played their first game of the season, beat Oakland 20-12. to And then they ran into, first off, it was Cresswell who had problems with COVID-19. They had to cancel the game in week two. Well, that gave them week two off as they went into week three, which was their game against Lakeview, the team that ended up winning the Sunset Conference. Then Coquille had some positive tests. They had to forfeit that week three game Games against Glide and Harrisburg were canceled. They didn't play again until the 11th of October, a Monday against Reedsport. They won that game 56-6, to and then they won on Friday against Rogue River. So they are only in their eighth game this season. Handoff, right side run for Willis. On third down and five, he gets a yard to the 11. But no further than that, Heisler in there among others to get the stop and face a fourth down and medium with 7.13 left in the second quarter. Good job there, Heisler and Brazen to fill that hole quickly. And I would figure at this point for Coquille, we're going to see Gunnar Yates on this carry. I, I can't imagine that you're going to away in this situation, fourth and four to go at the Hepner 11, away from your number one guy. Last two years, the offensive player of the year in the Sunset Conference, and he's one of those guys who was leaned on to lead this team during that 38-day break. But David Thomason said, told Jerry Ulmer of the OSA today, that this team is more mentally strong. Flag out. Yates was getting it in a buck sweep to the right. 
But the flag stops the play, dead at its tracks on fourth down and four. And this on Coquille, it changes the play call probably here. Now you have to think about Poston throwing the football, and Coquille's going to call another timeout here. We'll mention while we've got the opportunity, South Umpqua has beaten Vale now 24-21 in that game being played in Bend in the 3A semifinals. It was a 28-yard field goal from Yuri Moros with 18 seconds remaining to win it for South Umpqua today down in Bend. So the three seed in the 3A is on and at Cottage Grove High School in a little less than a half hour from now, the other 3A semifinal will take the number one seed, Sayusla, and the number five seed, Lapine. Five o'clock this evening at Grants Pass, the other 2A semifinal, number two, Kennedy, will take on number three, Lakeview. Just to finish the thought on how weird the start of this season was uh, for Coquille. Talking to other coaches, David Thomason, as he was talking to Jerry Ulmer in that story, said, look, a lot of teams would just shut down after yeah. missing that much time, especially because during that they had two weeks where the school closed and they went back to hybrid learning online. So to be able to put it all together – Get going and rolling. Thomason says this is their best football they've played, beating Monroe and Jefferson in consecutive weeks to start the playoffs. Four down and four, fumble, ball out. It's recovered in the interior line by guard Patrick Adams. Just a fumble on the snap, and Coquille never had a chance to try to convert that fourth down. Adams, two years in a row, has been a first-team offensive lineman. Doesn't change a whole lot because uh, Hepner's going to get it. And they survive their own fumble of the snap. And we should know, just looking out the Hepner bench, we're not going to see Jace Coe back in the football game for Hepner. It looks like he is sitting there without his helmet. I think his mom is down there with him right now. I think his dad as well. And it looks like Coe is going to be unable to continue here this afternoon. First down and a 10. Right side run. And trying to get out to the edge will be Cameron Proudfoot. Proudfoot, who is the replacement for Coe, kind of at a wingback position. It's hard to put some type of cliched design on what Hepner's offense is. It's got some single wing to it. It's got quite a bit to it. Greg Grant, over 32 years in charge of this program, has been able to tinker depending on his personnel. But... Losing Coe is a big piece to the puzzle. Last week he had four carries for 62 yards at a touchdown and two catches for 12 yards in the 40 to nothing win over Weston McEwen. Second down and a five after a five yard game by Proudfoot from the 18 yard line. Mitchell's got a ton of people in the backfield. They'll fake a toss and hand off. Up to the 25-yard line, Heisler is able to rumble. If they can get him going, he had 116 yards on 17 carries on the ground last week, including a touchdown. And that was our first first down of the day. It comes 18 minutes into the football game, and they're still scoreless. The way this has started right now, if you're Hepner, you, know, you have to feel good that you've held off the storm to this point. It's still a scoreless football game. It could easily be Coquille with a couple touchdown lead right now. But Hepner now, if they can get some offense going, is a chance to begin to get some momentum themselves in this football game and the way they operate. We saw five minutes to go in the half, but this could be the final possession of the half. First down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Mitchell in a shotgun set. Backs to each side. Toss play. Running out to the left side is George. Caden George across the 30. George across the 35. He's pulled out of bounds by Jonathan Huffman. It is enough, an 11-yard gain. It'll move the chains for Hepner. And another first down with 4.59 left in quarter number two. This is Hepner's third drive of the game. they will try to sustain, sustain something on this one. They have not looked to go through the air much. George will be to the left, Heisler to the right of the sophomore quarterback, Mitchell. Wing back Reich as well. They'll move Proudfoot out of the formation right. Hand off Heisler. He'll bounce out to the right side, trying to get to the edge, and he will. Outside the hash marks at the 40. He'll dive over the top of Yates, the tackler, who gets him after a three-yard gain. Check that. Not Yates, but Hayden DeGeros. 
And Jaderos did a really good job there to get down low and take Heisler's legs away. He wasn't going to win a one-on-one -on -one battle up high against Heisler. That wasn't going to work. He knew where to go, took his feet away, and kept what could have been a substantial pickup for Hebner and kept it to a three-yard gain. Jaderos for two consecutive years. The junior has been a second-team defensive back in the Sunset Conference. Coquille's record on the OSA website is 8-1. and one. They had a forfeit win and a forfeit loss. Really 7-0 and on the field this season. Here in the semifinals against 11-0, and Hepner's won 29 straight. Flag out on second down and seven, and false start is going to move Hepner back five yards. It was Pat Proudfoot at the slot back spot. He started about a half count early, and the flag flew immediately, so Hepner's backed up five yards. Mustangs, 24 consecutive playoff appearances. 1996 was the last time that they did miss the postseason on what is the 30th anniversary of their first state title. They won in 1992 over Vail in Greg Grant's second year. Flag out, hard count by Mitchell, and he gets the five yards back. He got both. Thomas Vigio and Tom Riley to move on the defensive line, and it's just an exchange of penalties. We're right back where we were, back to the 40-yard line, and second down and seven coming up with 3.49 to go in the half. Second down and seven to go from the 40-yard line, right hash mark set. Mitchell and a pistol set with Heisler behind him. Two receiver options to the left. And he'll motion left to right, George, out to the flat and throw it that way. George has it, and he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Willis. Willis drags him down, spins him to the 39-yard line. It ends up being a loss of a yard. And Willis did a great job there. He didn't just go charging at him. He settled himself. He got the feet set up, and he got the, the eyes on the waist of the ball carrier and just let him make the move into him. Quality tackle there's textbook, and Hepner's forced into a third and long. Third down and eight. Hepner has not gone into the uh, screen game of their offensive playbook, and this would be the type of situation where you might look for it, depending on how aggressive you think David Thomason and Coquille defensive coordinator Jake Cochran are going to be. It's like they're going to bring some pressure off of the uh, backside of Mitchell. Fake a toss. Mitchell to throw. Mitchell scrambles back to his left. He'll throw it and has it to Simeotti's hands. Breaks a tackle across midfield. Simeotti thrown down by Yates at the Coquille 44-yard line. But first down yardage, pick it up 17. Mitchell did a good job that time to move this way toward the receiver before throwing the football. Got Coquille running around a little bit back there in the secondary. Simeotti just found a spot with some space. Makes the catch, and then gets a good pickup afterwards to not just get the first down, but turn into a big play. Yates kind of tossed him like a rag doll at the end of the play, but tossed him inbound, so the clock is still spinning. 2.15 left in the second quarter. First down and 10 for Hepner in Coquille territory at the 44. Left, ha left hash mark set. Mitchell's got an empty backfield. Tight end left. They'll throw it out to the left. George on the swing play gets it to the 40-yard line, picking up about four. Driven out of bounds by Jonathan Huffman, the senior defensive back. 11, Hebner only has the one timeout remaining here, so the clock a real big factor. 158 to go on the half. The clock stopping, of course, is the play going out of bounds. But Hepner probably not a lot of snaps left in this half given the way they operate. Derek Fisher in the slot right, Xander Fisher outside of him, excuse me, Smith to the slot right, they'll throw it that way. Fisher is outside of him, downfield blocking. Smith makes one man miss, but Yates is not fooled, and it's just a one yard gain to Smith. 145 now to go on the clock with third and five here. Hepner right now, right, very content, given the way this half has unfolded, still in a scoreless game. Actually, they're gonna use a timeout here. So they will pause it with a minute 36 left in the second quarter. Scoreless game. Hepner trying to score before they go into the locker rooms on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Out of the Hepner timeout, third down 
and five from the 39 in Coquille territory. Mitchell to throw, pump fake, hit from behind, sacked on the play by Grady Areola. He had a man open on the right sideline if he had had time, but Areola just took it away from him, and now it's fourth down and long. Clock running a minute 18 to go in the half. Again, Hepner out of timeouts. Coquille has one remaining, but not using it here. I would suspect Hepner will be using the full allotted clock here and might even take a delay. Jacob Lentz is the punter, the junior who plays right guard, will stand at his 41-yard line. And the punt, a low line drive. Fair catch waved for, but it's going to roll out of bounds on the far sideline at the 16, away from Hunter Layton. So, Hepner does uh, force Coquille to work with a long field with 43 seconds left and just one timeout, scoreless prior to halftime. Yeah, I would think Coquille, given where they are on the field here, probably played fairly conservatively, but again, the way they operate, you could break one here with a guy like Yates just in your... You know, standard conservative play calling. So uh, I would suspect you put the ball in the hands of Yates and Willis and see if they can break one here. First down and 10. It will be Yates running to the left side, but Yates is stacked up after a three-yard gain up to the 19, leading the way, Jacob Lentz. And we're down to 30 seconds to go and counting here. And Coquille, given how deep they are in the field, does not appear to be inclined to call a timeout. The impact of losing Jace Coe, who's injured his left leg and is away from the team right now on crutches, getting back Simeotti allows them to put Simeotti at safety and move Derek Smith out to Coe's cornerback position. So defensively, they're able to make some minor adjustments. Offensively, though, Coe is a big piece to their counter running game, and so... They will have to make some adjustments as the teams are content going into halftime here at McMinnville High School and Wharton Stadium. Through two quarters, scoreless between Hepner and Coquille in the two-way semifinals here on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Eric Olson and Mark Bailey with you at McMinnville High School. We're scoreless at the half of this two-way semifinal between Hepner and Coquille. Coquille's had the better of it when you look at time of possession, although Hepner did even it back out a little bit. Coquille's had the ball for just under 14 minutes of this game. They had the dominant opening drive, but it ended up in nothing. And since then, both teams have been trying to survive mistakes. At this point, you, you, you've got that absolutely summarized perfectly. And right now, this is the type of game you're almost thinking one score will win it. Uh, the way this is unfolding, now I say that and we'll end up with, with a 28-21 game and a bunch of 60-yard runs uh, during the second half. But right now, the way this is going, the way the two defenses are in bend, not break mode, Hepner able to get in that third and final drive for them of the half, able to get down at least to about the 35-yard line of Coquille, then got pushed back somewhat because they had to get out of what they normally like to do in the final minute of the half, trying to move the football down the field a little quicker than usually that they would be looking to do. But right now, it's the defenses of the story. We've seen one big run by Yates, but that's been it. They've done a good job, Hepner, holding him down. Hepner, of course, has to deal with the loss of Jaden Coe. Can they make up for it offensively? As you point out, defensively, they've got a lot of options. They're able to move people around and make it work. The question is, Coe is really the number two option for them behind Heisler. Can they make up for that? You know, again, it's going to be a low possession game. We've only seen five total possessions of this football game. Three by Hepner, two by Coquille. Coquille will receive the opening kickoff in the second half. Right now, every possession is crucial because you right now you've got me thinking we probably only have a couple chances left to score in this football game, each team. The other reason why Coe's loss isn't as impactful on the defensive side is he is a defensive back. He plays at cornerback. And Bryce Poston has not been asked to throw the ball but three times in this contest. I wonder if this game comes down to Poston and Landon Mitchell, one of the two of them having to make a smart 
big play somewhere with a receiver in this contest because both teams are so run heavy. It, you're absolutely right. Can someone go against the grain and make a big play through the air? At this point, neither team has really shown all that much ability to do that. I think where it may happen, though, is when you see the two teams when they have passed be successful with shorter passes in the flat and getting somebody out into space because the two defenses are so concentrated on the run right now. If you can get somebody out in that space out in the flat, that may be where the big pass play comes in. Not so much you know the traditional let's throw it downfield. I mean, we had Jordan McCarty of Silverton here last night and Austin Ratliff at the other end, you know, catching you know 30, 40 yard balls all night long. It's not going to work that way in this game. It's more likely you're going to get that eight to ten yard route, make somebody miss a tackle and that turns into your 30, 40 yard gain that might turn the game around. Scoreless here at the half between Coquille and Hefner. Stay up to date with everything high school, including news, stories, coaches, polls, and more by visiting OSAA today. OSAA.org backslash today. Visit OSAA today, today. Here on the OSAA Foundation Halftime Report, we'll take a look at what's going on around the rest of the state on a semifinal Saturday as we continue on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. It's the OSAA Foundation Halftime Report. Hepner and Coquille scoreless. Coquille six first downs to Hepner's uh, three total yards of offense. Coquille 106 on 25 plays. Hepner 56 on 16 plays. There have been a couple of fumbles, and neither team has lost one, however. Two penalties each side. Coquille backwards 10 yards, and Hepner 20 yards. Time of possession's been the big one. Coquille's had it for 13-48. Hepner did catch up there in the second quarter with 10 minutes and 12 seconds of possession. The second half is getting ready here at McMinnville High School. We'll have the action for you. This has been the OSAA Foundation Halftime Report. And not really right now a breath of wind to speak of as Hepner gets set to kick off the second half. The number one seed is knotted up scoreless with the four seed Coquille Red Devils. Coquille's going to start with the ball. They have had the advantage as far as time of possession goes through the first half. We will see the first kickoff of the game from the Hepner Mustangs, and it will come off of the foot of another lineman. Connor Brosnan does the kicking. The senior has often the want to kick it in an onside fashion, and Coquille is ready for it. They've got nine guys within five yards of the 10-yard mark. Brosnan's going to kick it deep, however. And a couple of hops. It'll bounce a little bit away from... Jaderos and Jaderos coming to the right side does crawl across the 20 yard line up to the 22 where he is stopped by his opposite number both wearing number 24 Caden George the linebacker is the tackler and Coquille's got it first down in 10. Two drives were the Red Devils in that opening uh, first half one of which went 10 minutes neither of which resulted in points of course we're in a scoreless game here as we start the uh, third quarter of football and again there were only five possessions that entire first half three by Hepner two by Coquille so not many chances left for either team though we're just starting the third quarter. Wing T with double tight Hayden Jaderos in motion left to right handoff and to Brock Willis he'll mosey on down to the 30 yard line pick it up eight. Simiotti in there on the stop for Hepner. The Mustangs saw Blaine Mahoney lead them with eight total tackles in the first half. That's Simeone's seventh of the game. So Jaderos the junior is the wing back to the left. Brock Willis is straight behind post in the quarterback who's under center. Yates takes a sweep out to the left side, and Yates has first down yardage. Pick it up six, running to the left and running into the arms of Connor Brosnan. And it had to be Brosnan to make that stop. If he doesn't get him, it might have been a while before Yates was going to be brought down. It looked like he was going to burst out for even bigger yardage. Good play, though, by Brosnan to keep it where it was. Yates, 72 yards on the ground on his 13th carry of the contest. Did break off a 31-yarder in the first half. First down and 10 for Coquille, a minute into the third quarter. 
And a right side run post in this time has nowhere to go. Tucker Ashbeck, the defensive end, on the left side of the Hepner defense, steps up to make the stop. Ashbeck got in there pretty much untouched, knifing through the Coquille offensive line, a missed blocking assignment somewhere there. And Ashbeck with a fine play defensively to push Coquille back slightly, a loss of actually where they end up marking pretty much no gain on the play. In these wing tees, often you've got pulling guards, and sometimes they get caught up in the wash, and that's probably who should have picked up Ashbeck on that play. Second down and 10 now from the 36. Toss play out wide to the right side for Yates. He'll break a tackle. He's across the 40. Runs into Simiotti, who pulls him down at the 43-yard line, right near the Hepner line. Ashbeck in there to help out. Proudfoot had a shot at the line of scrimmage to get him, but he tried to tackle up around the shoulders. And that's just not going to work against a guy like Yates. Yates shook him off and turned that into a positive pickup there for Coquille. Robert Wilson, who coaches the girls' basketball team, is the JV coach in Hepner, is calling the defense. He's got this third down and two play in. Yates, though, gets around the first defender and is pulled down by Heisler. Just short of the midfield stripe, but five yards is enough to move the chains and keep the drive going for Coquille. And this drive is looking very reminiscent of the first drive, and Hepner's going to use a timeout right now. So the Mustangs come out of the locker room, and with 9.38 left, obviously the adjustments Greg Grant wanted to set up with Robert Wilson, they haven't seen them as they're trying to defend Yates. Yeah, it, well... These wing T teams, it's really tough because these offenses like this spend so much time refining up front in particular the footwork and where the linemen have to be. It's not just about we're you know bull strength and we're gonna, just going to push you around. Really, these wing T's aren't like that. The, this double wing also, I haven't been familiar with that where I do games normally in Hood River back about 15 years ago or so how much time they spent on the littlest things with footwork. And these wing T teams are very similar. And you can make adjustments, but if you get one of these offenses refined, they believe they can get those gains of four or five yards regardless. Out of the Hepner timeout, first down and 10. Dive play and a fumble. It looks like Poston, was, excuse me, Brock Willis was able to fall back on top of it, but no gain on that first down. In fact, they lose about a half yard, the exchange between Poston and Willis, there was the drop. And that's why it's so important for a Hepner, and they've done it pretty well so far, to prevent the big plays. Make Coquille have to run a lot of plays, and for any offense, regardless of what you run, eventually, if you have to run enough plays, you'll make some sort of mistake like we just saw there. Second down and 10. Yates, sweep to the left side, breaks one tackle, but is wrapped up by Brosnan into Hepner territory. A two-yard gain to the Hepner 49. This Hepner team, they have been the class of the Blue Mountain Conference for decades, and this year there were a couple of tests. The Weston McEwen, who they played twice, but they were able to control both of those games winning 39 nothing and 40 to nothing in the quarterfinals last week. They went to Grant Union and John Day beat them 36 to 12. They haven't been tested except for the first month of the season. Third down and eight from the 49 in Hepner territory. Hand off to Willis. Willis is going to rumble his way down to the Hepner 43 yard line. He made something out of what looked like a play that should have been stopped at the line. Nation and Ashbeck on the stop, by the way, there. But now it, I was wondering if the, they had been stuck, let's say, at fourth and eight, what Coquille would do. Now you got a fourth and two. We know what Coquille's going to do. They're going to try to get this first down. To get ready for games like this, Greg Grant does. He's the athletic director at Hepner, too. He goes hunting for big games in that first month. Toledo on the road, they won 19 nothing. Warrington, a 15 to 12 one, they squeak out. And then they won at Kennedy, the team they beat the last two times they've made the state championship in 2015 and 2019. Fourth and two. Yates to the right. Willis will be the one who takes the handoff running right side, and he gets stood up. I Jacob Lentz got him. I don't think so. Lentz and Heisler there, and he's going to be stopped a yard short, and Hepner gets a big defensive stand on fourth and short. So the Mustangs force the turnover. The one wing T team they play in the Blue Mountain Conference 
gave them a test this year in Stanfield, and they ended up winning 14 to nothing in that one, a game similar to this that had very few possessions. So Hepner getting their first touch of the ball in the second half with 7.29 on the clock in the third quarter. The game is scoreless. First down and 10 from the 42. Toss play, left side run. Heisler out on the edge is pulled down. Getting out to the edge to meet him was Waylon Messerly, the freshman linebacker. At 49 tackles coming into this game as a middle linebacker for this Coquille team. Heisler run of four yards on this first down play. Left hash mark set at the 46. Landon Mitchell with Heisler to his left at a shotgun set. Second and six, fake the toss. Mitchell's going to keep it running to the right side, and Mitchell gets to the midfield stripe. Hauled down there by Bo Messerly, the one-year older Messerly brother on this Coquille team. But Mitchell gets another four yards to set up a third down and short. Messerly did a good job on that play. He stayed at home. He didn't get fooled by any of the power to the left or the fake pitch that direction. He stayed with his assignment, and he'll prevent a first down there for Hepnick. Xander Fisher will line out wide to the right side. Everybody else tight to the formation on third down and two from the 50-yard line. Mitchell has Heisler to his left. He'll hand it to him. Heisler diving up the middle is caught by Tom Riley in the junior defensive tackle. Holds Heisler to a yard. They needed two. Interesting decision now for Hepner in this football game. We're halfway through the third quarter already. Still scoreless. Fourth and one. Coquille 49-yard line, and it looks like Landon Mitchell's got a play going to the huddle. Riley, first team defensive lineman in the Sunset Conference this year and during his sophomore campaign. The junior and his Coquille team facing a fourth down and one with 5.33 in the clock in the third quarter. Again, everybody tied to the formation. Mitchell, hands off. Heisler running right side. Heisler falls forward to the 47. Looks like he's got it to move the chains for the Mustangs. Hepner kept it very basic. Give it to your best back and let him power for a couple. And that's what he did. So the Mustangs keep the football with 520 to go in the third quarter in this scoreless struggle. Running to the right behind both of the guards. They have that offset line. And it sets up a first down and 10. A little more than five minutes left here in quarter number three. Hepner trying to break the scoreless tie. Hepner and you look at 30,000 feet trying to win their 30th game in a row and get back to the state championship. They defend the 2A state title. Fake to Heisler, left side run Mitchell. Mitchell gets out to the edge, and he's pushed out of bounds into his sideline out at the 40-yard line, given a 7-yard gain. Greg Grant here in this first drive trying to find ways to get Landon Mitchell a little bit more involved. Add that element of getting outside a little bit there, and they get a good first down carry. Set up a second and short, favorable down in distance. It also gives them, along with Heisler and Caden George, who we've seen a couple of times, a third running option with Jace Coe on the sidelines, his knee now in an air cast, his left, his left leg, I should say. Second down and three from the 40. Left hash mark set. Mitchell's got two of the backfield. Handoff this time, it is George running to the right. George tries to get out to the edge. He'll be caught and hauled down from behind. Hayden Jaderos jumps on his back and pulls him down after a one-yard gain. Sets up a third down and short situation here for Hepner. Really very similar to what we saw a few moments ago. Under four and a half minutes remaining in quarter number three. Hepner third down and two. At the 39-yard line, out at the right hash mark. Towards Coquille's sideline, Xander Fisher will set up the senior at wide receiver. Derek Smith out to the left, and he'll move outside the hash marks that way. George at wingback, standing right behind the center. Hand up to Heisler. Heisler running left. He'll spin his way down to the 38-yard line. Not quite enough, picking up one on the play. Going to leave it fourth and one. They just made a fourth and one in the last sequence of downs. So let's see if they can pick it up for a second straight time. They add even another lineman out onto the field with 
senior Blake Carter coming in. And now Hepner's got to use another timeout. Here in the third quarter, Greg Grant has used two of his three second half timeouts with 3.35 left in the period. Hepner trying to convert a fourth and one when we come back on the OSA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Fourth down and one from the 38 right hash mark. Fake a high snap, direct snap, and it stood up right into the hands of Caden George, and he doesn't get there. They had used that play effectively back in the first half once. It didn't work here. Coquille had people right there. They were on it, and now it is Hepner not making a fourth down conversion, as Coquille did when their last drive got stopped, and Hep Coquille takes over at the 38-yard line with 3.29 to go in the third quarter in their own territory, and we still don't have a point on the board. Each team's defense has withstood a fourth and short to force a turnover on downs to start off this third quarter. Coquille will take over at the 38. First down and 10. Handoff. Yates running left side. He slipped. Fell down trying to get out to the edge on the left and ends up no gain. Maybe even lost a half yard. Blaine Mahoney is in on the stop. He had eight tackles to lead Hepner in the uh, first half. Second and 10 for the Red Devils. Three minutes left in quarter number three. Jaderos is wider to the left side. They'll put him in motion to hand off. Buck sweep out to the right. Jaderos trying to get out to the edge. A flag out on the play as Jaderos is knocked out of bounds by Heisler. Heisler hit him right at the 48-yard line, right on the boundary. But the play's going to go backwards because somebody had a tight hold on Simeone. I think it was Gunnar Yates actually leading him out that way who got called for the hold. The flag went right to where he was and where his block occurred. So now Coquille will be backed up 10 yards. That is only their third penalty of the football game for 20 yards. Hepner's had two for 20. And for both of these teams, because the pass game is just not a significant part of what they do, that type of penalty is, can be crippling to a drive. It just it, The down and distance situations for these offenses, especially when you're going against quality defenses as they both are, it just becomes very difficult to pick up because you have those limited options. Second and 19, dive play for Willis. He tries to edge to the left, and he falls forward across the 31-yard line, picking up... Two or three on the play. Third down. It's about 17 to go from the 32-yard uh, line. Coquille attacking left to right with 2.20 left in the third quarter. They are, like Hepner, trying to find the first points of this game. Bryce Poston under center. He will hand off. Yates running to the left side. He does get out to the edge. Yates trying to beat Simiotti to the corner, and he does. Yates into Hepner territory, steps out of bounds. Simiotti shouldered him out, but down to the 40, where they'll end up marking it. Oh, they'll say right at the 50-yard line. So Yates breaks a big run, a, ends up being an 18-yarder, and gets Coquille a first down. And for Hepner, a missed opportunity to get a stop. Yeah, you, know, you have third and 18. You know, frankly, if you're probably holding like an eight or nine yard pickup, they're probably punting the football. Instead, you have the 18 yard carry, and now Coquille's got renewed life on the drive at midfield. And now you probably don't force a punt when you get to fourth down as they get into Hepner territory. At the 50 on this play, handoff Willis up the middle. Willis trying to crawl across the top of a blocker. Gets to the 45, pick it up five yards on the first down play. It also means Hepner's not going to touch the ball till some point in the fourth quarter, most likely, with a minute 45 left in the third and the clock spinning. Not unless you get a turnover of some kind. Second down and five. Jonathan Huffman, the senior, will be the split end to the right. Out at the right hash mark, the ball is towards the left. Poston standing near the M here at McMinnville High School, right in the middle of the field. Fake, and then it's Yates running to the left side, and Yates runs right into Blaine Mahoney, who has been tremendous for Hepner today at defensive end. 
Eppner's defensive effort has been outstanding, especially when Coquille has appeared to get momentum. That run by Yates was the second longest run he's had so far, and he's only had really two impactful long runs today. And the first time, Hepner was able to stiffen and hold Coquille off the scoreboard. Can they do it again? Jadero says the wing back to the left. Yates again, left side run. Yates gets first down yardage across the 40-yard line before he's stopped at the Hepner 39. Clock is paused with 46 seconds left in the third quarter as they set the chains on the far sideline. But Coquille gets a new set of downs. And now in Mustang territory, this defense is going to face yet another test. Yates is out a little bit wider to the right side at wing back. And a sweep play to the right side. Jadero's trying to get to the edge. He will not as he's caught. Brosnan out there on the edge, uh, helped out on the play by Lentz. Yard backwards. We'll bring it to the 40-yard line. A second down and 11 facing Coquille as we start the fourth quarter. They're in Hepner territory, and both teams are looking for the first points of the game of this 2A semifinal here on the OSA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Fourth quarter action on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation from McMinnville High School's Wharton Stadium, the number one seeded Hepner Mustangs, the number four seeded Coquille Red Devils. Nothing to separate the two teams on the scoreboard through three quarters. Coquille has it at the Hepner 40, second down and 11. At the right hash mark, Poston's going to hand off to Yates, running to the left side. Check that. This was Brock Willis. Willis does get three yards, excuse me, two to the 38 yard line, but a third down and long. Hepner's defense is. Watch Yates convert one of these on the ground. Can they get a stop on this one? It's definitely four down territory. Unless there was a, a disastrous loss here on this play. I don't see Coquille thinking punt at this point. This part of the field at your 38-yard line, opening minute, fourth quarter, in a game which no one has scored to this point. you got to take your shots when you got them. Jonathan Upman, the split end is uh, tight to the formation left. Yates is right. He will take the handoff coming back to the left, and he runs into the middle of the line. Brosnan again fills that hole. It's a stop for no gain. And fourth down and eight for Coquille. Here would be the argument to punt if you were Coquille. Hepner has 76 yards of offense through three quarters. Your defensive effort has been terrific, and I think they're going to do that here. Pin them deep because, frankly, there is no sign to this stage that Hepner's going to go 90-plus yards. So why not punt them deep? Figure, okay, we hold maybe even after a first down or two, we're still going to get great field position in the final minutes. Tony Flores is a senior. He is the punter. Fourth down and eight. It's a direct snap. Yates trying to run out to the left side after taking a handoff. Is pulled down at the 35-yard line. They try for a fake, and Heisler makes the stop. Just a three-yard gain to Yates, and Hepner turns the ball over on downs at the 35. Hepner never put a deep man back. I don't think Hepner ever thought it. I think their feeling was, if you want to kick it, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get fooled on that. So that's a sign of, of you know with this sort of football game. It's zero zero is our coach is just really at this point trying to almost pull anything out of the playbook to try to make a play. Mustangs ball ten twenty four on the clock in the fourth quarter. Can they put the first points on the board? Landon Mitchell on first down and 10 from his 35. Toss play left side for George. George does find a seam, breaks one tackle, and is hit. From behind, it's Brock Willis who makes the stop after George runs for four. Second and six from the 39, left hash mark set. Hepner's got three receiver options to the left for Mitchell. He will hand off to Heisler, double handoff coming to the right side. Mitchell's out in front to block for George, who's pulled down just short of the midfield stripe. First down yardage for Hepner on a little bit of a 
taste of Coquille's own medicine with the double handoff in the backfield. And the Mustangs keep the football here moving with 9.29 to go in the football game, which normally we'd be saying in a tie game is a lot of time remaining. That's not the case today, is it? This not, the way, not the way these two teams both ball control as well. By the way, Hepner's really good at just in general the pacing of their offense and ball control because they blow out a lot of teams in the Blue Mountain Conference, but all the coaches over there tell me they do it really politely. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 49-yard line. Mitchell, shotgun set. He'll motion George left to right. Fake a toss to him. Mitchell spins around. He's going to run, and he hops into the air and into the hands of Tom Riley. The junior defensive tackle stops him for a gain of one. There was a lot of motion and misdirection on that play, and Coquille did a good job of ignoring it. Riley just stayed right there in his spot in the defensive line and said, eventually the ball is coming to me, and it did, and he held him to a one-yard pickup. Well, Eight and a half minutes left. Well, I was going to say to finish up our last conversation, this is probably Hepner's last possession where they can, where it's really their normal normal opportunities, where they can just run their normal offense with eight and a half minutes to go here. Coquille, if they get the ball back fairly quickly, it'll be their last chance in that situation. George out of the formation, left to right. Toss play, Heisler to the right side. Heisler to the edge, a stiff arm and into Coquille territory. He stiff-armed Bo Messerly, but the sophomore pulled him down after a gain of three to the Coquille 47. We keep talking about the, the offense and not being able to get rhythm and inability to move the football. These two teams on defense are playing a tremendous football game. I mean, it is just hard to find any room for any of these backs, whether it's Heisler, whether it's Yates or whoever it is. There just isn't a lot of space to create anything. It's why these teams make it to this point in sure. the season. It's because in one-on-one -on -one situations, they open field tackle better than the teams they're playing, and they're able to scheme better. Third down and a six from the 47. Right hash mark set. Mitchell, slap his hand together, fakes a toss to the right, rolls left, he'll throw it downfield. Simeon it has it, the 30-yard line, breaks a tackle at the 25, and is pulled down at the 20-yard line by Hayden Jaderos, who saves the drive for the Coquille Red Devil defense. And we wondered if somebody could hit a downfield pass, and it's happened. And that was a strike to Simeone as Mitchell put that in a perfect spot. A big play. They're inside the 20, 7 7 to go in a scoreless football game. Hepner easily their best chance of the football game. 28 yards gained down to the 19. Left hash mark still for Mitchell. He's got a back to his right. That's Heisler. In motion, and a toss play to George, working out to the right side. George on the edge, good cut back to his left. He's inside the 15, and pulled down at the 12-yard line again. Jaderos on the stop. Jacob Lentz made that hole on the outside. He pulled out as a guide, was able to get out there and move a Coquille defender to give the opportunity for Heisler to pick up those yards. Best scoring chance of the game for either team since Coquille's first drive of the contest with six and a half minutes left in the ball games, at least regulation ball game. We're scoreless with Hepner. Second down and three from the 12. At the right hash mark this time, pistol set. Heisler behind Mitchell. George in motion, right to left. Toss, fake the toss, hand off to Heisler, dive up the middle, down the hash marks he goes to the eight to move the chains. By the time Hepner snaps the football again, we will be about five and a half minutes remaining. Coquille does have all their timeouts left. Hepner has only one remaining. The fans who've made the trip from South Morrow County started to get vocal as the Mustangs are as close as they've been all game long. First down and goal from the eight. Mitchell turns and says something to the senior back, Heisler, who's behind him in the pistol set. George left to right in the formation. Fake it. Mitchell, play action. He'll throw into traffic. Caught by Smith. Breaks a tackle. Smith dives for the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. Hefner Mustangs. Landon Mitchell, an eight-yard pass play. Derek Smith, the senior, caught it with a defender draped on his back, broke that tackle, and got in. A day where we've watched two teams just slug it out. Two pass plays for Hepner. 
The one to Simeone to get inside the 20, and now that one to Smith have put the first points on the scoreboard with 5.32 to play in this football game. Now this is huge as well. Hepner, in fact, they may even use their last timeout before the two-point conversion. 5.32 left. Hepner is on the scoreboard. Their two-point conversion when we come back on the OSA Radio Network sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. 5.32 left in the fourth quarter. Landon Mitchell, just an eight-yard touchdown pass to Derek Smith, has Heisler to his right. Three receiver options left. Smith will switch spots with George. Now to Heisler. Heisler, hands off, rolling to the right side, thinking about a pass. Instead, Simeotti will run. Simeotti at the goal line. Simeotti has stood up. He doesn't get there. Bo Meserly gets the stop. Key stop for Coquille to prevent the conversion. It looked like Simeone was going to get him. There was a wall of three white players truly in front of the goal line to keep him out. That was Hepner's last timeout to set this up with 5.32 left. Coquille trailing Hepner 6-0. They'll get the ball when we come back on the OSA Radio Network sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Eight play drive, a little more than four and a half minutes and 65 yards ends with Landon Mitchell hooking up with Derek Smith from eight yards out for our first score of the game. The conversion was stopped. Hepner 6-0 as they kick off to Coquille. They'll kick it towards the near sideline. Hayden DeGeros will pick it up in play at the 17. Breaks a tackle. He's across the 20. And at that point, no further for him to go as he was stopped by Cameron Proudfoot among others, in there on the help, uh, Cade Cunningham, the sophomore. For Epner now, they are trying to get back to the state championship game. They're the defending titleists. They won in 2019. They beat Kennedy that year. They've won 29 straight. Their last loss was to Kennedy in the 2018 playoffs. Coquille trying to get back to the title game for the first time since 1970. They lost in the semis to Harrisburg in 2016. And it will be a handoff to Willis on a first down. 5.20 left. Coquille feels like they've got plenty of time. It, and if they can punch it in, it comes down to a conversion. Exactly. And with the three timeouts remaining, that probably extends the time of the clock with their offense a good minute to a minute and a half. So... You know, they could still stay within what they like to do right now. But it was a pass play that broke the tie. Bryce Poston doesn't throw a ton in this wing T offense. Second down at about six from the 26. Poston, play action to throw right side, and he completes it. Yates has it, and Yates has it across the 35 up to the 37-yard line. Yates in traffic was able to hold that one in. It's traffic, but by getting it out to that outside like that, it does provide some space for Yates to work. It's not the tight quarters of running between the tackles where, you know, everybody eventually gets a shot as they come in. There he's got some space to make people miss, and that may be a way that Coquille's able to get him the ball a little bit more, a little bit better opportunity to break a big one. Yates handoff, sweep to the left side, and he is hit. Yates hard by Connor Brosnan, but Yates still ends up picking up almost five on the play to the 43-yard line. The next snap of the ball will come with fewer than four minutes remaining in this game. Coquille trailing for the first time. Hepner six, Coquille zero. Second down and about five, right in the middle of the park. This time Willis. Willis dives his way right behind the left guard and the center all the way to the 49-yard line. It's good for six and a Coquille first down. And they're going to be right to the line of scrimmage here. Yates wing back to the right. Janeros to the left. And Willis the fullback just had the first down carry. First down and 10. Poston hands off to Willis running left again. And Willis wrestles his way to the 47-yard line, picking up four yards on the play. He is pulled down by Toby Nation. Coquille running quickly with 3.18 left in the fourth quarter. Yates left side run this time, trying to get out to the edge. Yates 
is pulled out of bounds by Simeotti. He does gain three more to the Hefner 43. Getting out of bounds, preserves precious time on that clock, keeps it stopped at 3.11, though Coquille's going to go without a huddle again. Split in is to the right on third down and two. Yates left side again. Yates hit again by Nation, who stops him. Depends on the spot. Needed to get across the 41. I think they are going to face a couple of inches probably to get there. This is close enough, it looks like. Tracy Sumner is going to pull the chains over. Yeah, they're going to get a measurement here. The, the eyeball, well, no, they're not going to. He's going to say it's just short. He went with the eyeball test. And the, the stick across the way is pretty much right at the 41, and the ball is just a hair short of the 41 out here on the near side. We are talking five or six inches. Heck, when Joe Barbie puts his hand on the ball, he'll more or less move it to first down yardage. With 2.50 left, fourth down, and inches to go. Post and under center. Hepner stacked the box. Dive for Willis. Willis see the outside. Breaks away at the 25. 20, 15, 10. He is hauled down by Simeotti. Just short of the five yard line. Simeotti dove at Willis's feet and he was able to stop this from being a tie game. We're gonna mark him at the seven yard line, but biggest play of the day for Coquille came in. They just wanted to make sure they could get six inches and they got a whole lot more than that. It's interesting, Coquille's still moving fervently with 2.30 left. Hepner doesn't have any timeouts here. Under center, Poston turns, hands off to Yates. He's into the open and into the end zone. A 70-yard touchdown run to tie it up. 2.23 left in the contest and it's six all. Coquille, like Hepner, will go for two. And with Hepner out at timeouts, in a lot of ways, the football game is going to come down to this play. But as Coquille moves so quickly, a Hepner is going to get the ball back with some time on the clock. Yates right. Willis at the fullback. In motion, left to right. Jadaros going to the right side, going to the goal line and into the end zone. The two-point conversion for Brock Willis puts Coquille in front, 8-6. to 2.23 left in the contest, and Coquille is in front by two. Here on the OSAA Radio Network, it's sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. A couple of broken tackles on consecutive plays. Gets Coquille into the end zone. Brock Willis's two-point conversion after Gunner Yates' 70-yard touchdown run as Coquille in front of Hepner, 8-6. to six. Two minutes and 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Hepner without timeouts as they wait for Levi Hoyle to kick it off to them. Hoyle, little lefty pooch, and it'll be taken to the 45 and a little of a return for Caden George, but... Not much, as he'll end up getting stopped at the 46-yard line, pulled down by Grady Ariola, And Hepner has 54 yards in between them and potentially going back to the state championship. 2-17, the lack of timeouts now become a real factor for the Mustangs. So they must be efficient here, but they did show they can throw the football. Remember that touchdown drive that got them the lead here in this quarter? They had the big pass play to Simeone and, of course, scored on the TD pass to Derek Smith. Landon Mitchell in shotgun. Heisler to his right toss play. Heisler going that way with blockers out in front. Heisler hit and stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard as Bo Messerly was out there with four blockers to contend with, and he was able to fight through everything to stop that for no gain. And impressive to be able to take Heisler down by the shoulders the way he did. Xander Fisher will go wide to the left side with Derek Smith inside of him. Smith had the eight-yard touchdown catch about four minutes ago on the game clock. Second down and 10. Mitchell to throw, straight drop. Flushed out to his right. Mitchell will throw on the run, incomplete. Under through Caden George on the near sideline. 
Dean Jaderos had good coverage out there for Coquille. Mitchell just couldn't find a lot there. Look like he may have had the ball slide out of his hand as he was throwing it there. It was not a good looking ball that came up well short of the receiver. It'll be at the right hash mark, 47 yard line. For Hepner, third down and 10. With no timeouts in a minute 39, they will have to convert. They cannot stop it if Coquille gets the ball back. Trips to the left. In fact, Heisler will go out that way as well, and they'll go empty backfield. Mitchell. Fake to the left. Now he'll throw over the middle. Simiotti catches it. A flag out at the 40-yard line. It's going to come back. He, there were not seven men on the line of scrimmage for Epner. They had one of those receivers on the left side of the three had to come up to the line of scrimmage to be a split end. They didn't have seven up front, and this is going to come back. That flag was dropped right on, the, on both sidelines. There's a flag on each side right at the line of scrimmage. An illegal procedure penalty on Hepner. They didn't have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Greg Grant's going to argue his point, it, but it is being explained it, to him. It, and it, now he's, it's the now right he's, call. Yelling, now he's it, yelling at his team. It, you gotta, it's, it's the right call. Yeah. It, it, they had, it was the far side. All three receivers were a good yard to two yards behind the line of scrimmage. So third down and 15, back at the 42-yard line. Minute 32 remaining. Coquille 8, Hefner 6 in the On Point Community Credit Union OSAA 2A State Championship semifinal. 52 years since the last time Coquille went to a title game. Mitchell with Heisler behind him in a pistol set. Options to the right, play action. He'll throw it back to Heisler. It's high and through his hands incomplete. Mitchell got planted on that screenplay by Grady Areola, and now fourth down and 15, Hepner's season very well comes down to this play. If they're able to complete that, as Coquille's going to use a timeout, if Heisler holds that, that play was going to work. It was well set up. It was just a little bit high. It was off the hands of Heisler, but he had to reach up for it. If he's able to pull that down, he had plenty of room to adjust and get settled to go downfield. He had two blockers with him in front. That play was going to work for big yardage. I'm, it, I'm not sure it gets the first down, but it'll put them at least very close. Of course, then the problem is they couldn't have stopped the clock. There's a minute and 20 seconds left. Coquille has used the first of their three timeouts. They lead 8-6. to six. The Red Devils themselves, they've had a great 2021 because last season was actually this spring. They went 4-1. and one. The only loss then was to Douglas. The 3A team beat them 34-28. to 28. The loss that's on their record this year is the forfeit they had to concede to Lakeview because of COVID-19 positive tests in the middle of their week three, getting ready for that game with Lakeview. Lakeview ends up winning the Sunset Conference. Coquille has not lost a game on the field since that Douglas game. Fourth down and 15, Hepner to throw. Over the middle into traffic, knocked down by Yates. Simiotti was running down the seam. He did not look back for the ball and it's a turnover on downs. Coquille can get into the victory formation and get ready to go to the state championship for the first time since 1970. The Mustangs know it. Guys doubled over in pain. The 13 seniors that were part of that 2019 championship team, they had only lost three games in their career at Hepner. Just a tough, hard-fought game here today. We finally were able to see the offenses get on the board here in the latter part of the fourth quarter. Bryce Poston, the senior. Gets to go under center on first down and 10. He will kneel. And that'll start the clock moving. Coquille will have to kneel on it one more time. Kind of depends how quickly they start the play clock down on the field with a minute left in this one. So the Red Devils are the four seed. They will move from Wharton Stadium into the 2A championship game. 
And their eyes can go down to Grant's pass at 5 o'clock on the OSA network and watch number two, Kennedy, and number three, Lakeview. Poston waiting until he sees the hand of the air from Rebecca Brisson, the uh, back judge, and he'll take it. Neal. That should do and it. And that should do it with 30 seconds left of the contest. Tracy Sumner, the referee, says you guys can go to the sideline and celebrate. We're not going to start the play clock that quickly. So, Coquille has done it after falling behind 6-0 on Landon Mitchell's touchdown pass to Derek Smith. Gunner Yates gets into the end zone for the 29th time this season. They convert the two-point conversion. That's the difference in the contest. Coquille 8, Hepner 6, and that's your final. Coquille going to the two-way state championship next to Saturday. And we will tell you all about how this game got to where we are now when we come back to the post-game show on the OSA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Here on the OSAA Radio Network, sponsored by Pacific Office Automation at Wharton Stadium on the campus of McMinnville High School. The uh, Coquille Red Devils with an 8-6 win over the Hepner Mustangs, handing Hepner their first loss since 2018. The win streak ends at 29, and Coquille wins their eighth game of the season on the field to go to the state championship next to Saturday. I'm Eric Olson along with Mark Bailey here, post-game coverage. And this was all defense all the time until the final six minutes of the contest. Hepner was able to connect through the passing game. Landon Mitchell to Derek Smith with 532 left from eight yards out. But it was Mitchell to Simeotti that got them down deep into Coquille territory and broke the scoreless tie. Two-point conversion doesn't go in at the goal line. Simeotti has stood up on the play, and then Coquille races down the field, the fastest they had played all game in their wing tee. Gunner Yates, his 29th touchdown of the season to win the game. I was impressed, A, how well they ran no huddle. They, they, they were ready for this. Number two, the big play was the Willis on fourth and less than a yard. And th that's what got them the touchdown. 34 yards, they were at the 41-yard line of Hepner, needed a couple chain links. And Hepner sold out to get the stop there. And at that point of the game, that's not a surprise. And Willis popped it through a hole. And when he got away, it was fortunate at that point, actually, they didn't score right there. And uh, I think it was Simeone who made the diving tackle that time to keep him out of the end zone. But it just was inevitable that within a play or two later, they'd get in the end zone. Well, and Yates has got the winning touchdown, but it was Willis who converted the two-point conversion. That's the difference in the contest. Coquille winning 8-6 to six here today. They will move into the championship, and they will play the winner of Kennedy and Lakeview. Lakeview and Coquille didn't get to play on the field this season because it was the game that uh, the Coquille Red Devils had to uh, forfeit in week three because of COVID-19 positive tests. Now, Kennedy has also been hard luck a couple of times in yeah. a row at state championship games against Hepner, so they are trying to get themselves back to a title game as well. It's going to be a fantastic one down at Grants Pass. It'll be interesting to see how that one turns out. I mean, right now, Coquille doesn't care. <laughs> they, they know they're playing next week. That's all they're going to concern themselves with. They'll worry about scouting that game when it comes time to do so and, and when they get the film of it. Right now, they're just going to enjoy the fact they're going to the state championship. Heartbreak for the Hepner Mustangs. Their first loss in a couple of years. This senior group of 13 has only lost four games in their entirety in Hepner uniforms. The OSAA is proud to partner with Moda Health and honoring one player from each team as the Moda Health players of the game. For the Hepner Mustangs, it was... The uh, man who made a couple of big catches and made a couple of huge tackles, Kaysen Simiotti, and uh, for the uh, Coquille Red Devils, the uh, guy who has led them offensively, player of the year, two years in a row in the sunset, Gunnar Yates with the game-winning touchdown. Congratulations to these players on a great game, and thanks to Moda Health for sponsoring this recognition program. Moda Health, where health matters. 
going on. The final score, Coquille 8, Hepner 6, and the Coquille Red Devils are going to the On Point Community Credit Union OSAA 2A State Championship game next Saturday.